Welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our student ambassador for today, Ivan Chinchilla Dannenberger. He is a musician and cultural promoter in the project Sinfonica Municipal Des Amparadas, where he organizes concerts and activities for the communities in the city of Desamparadas, Costa Rica. With the Sinfonica Municipal de Desamparados, he has promoted the performances of Costa Rican music in his community concerts where access to music and art is difficult to have. This year, he has joined forces with the Archivo Historica Musical of the University of Costa Rica for the reading, study, and edition of the work El Duelo de la Patria, which is an iconic national work. During seven years, the Archivo Historica Musical developed this edition and research project, starting its study from the oldest known source, 1894. From 1894 through the 20th century, a rigorous study was made to yield this new critical score. The project seeks from the social action perspective to approach and collaborate with communities, Sinfonica Municipal de Desamparados, as a project that has a communal function of the promotion of Costa Rica music around the country and counts with the support of the Office of Culture of Desamparados and the Municipality of Desamparados is a key point for reading, recording, and publishing the study. Chinchilla is currently a student of saxophone performance at the University of Costa Rica in the studio of Dr. Javier Valerio Hernandez. As a teacher during his career as a musician and performer, Chinchilla has promoted the performance of Latin American and Costa Rican repertoire, being his main focus. He is currently part of the Big Band of Costa Rica, Banda Municipal de Aceri, Sinfonica Municipal de Desamparados, and the saxophone quartet, Saxeri. With the saxophone ensemble of the University of Costa Rica, he has performed at the 13th Encuentro Universitario de Saxophone in Mexico, and the Second Festival Internacional de Saxophone Bellas Artes Cali in Colombia with the saxophone quintet Batu, a group which worked on the rescue and promotion of Costa Rican music. He has also performed in international tours with Costa Rican groups such as La Milixia and Republica Fortuna. He has been a member of the Tico Chaz Band, Symphonic Band of the University of Costa Rica, among others. Besides his work as a performer, Chinchilla works as a teacher in different music and schools in his community. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, uh, thanks for connecting to this session today. My work uh, mainly develops in the city of Desamparados. <laughs> the city I am from with the project name uh, Municipal Symphonic of Desamparados or Sinfonica Municipal de Desamparados, the city symphonic orchestra, which is being financed from the Office for Culture and Tourism for the Municipality of Desamparados, which has allowed us to realize concerts, tours, and shows directly our community. Okay. Um, in the last years, our work has focused itself in the promotion and diffusion of repertoire Costa Rican in our community. Therefore, we realize educative tours in primary schools and high schools, concerts in different communities from our region, concerts in retirement homes, or up to concerts in theaters on our country like our latest collaboration and participation in the musical called Los Tres Encantos, which is based and inspired by stories and tales with tradition and also contains original national music. Um, every show and concert we realize we try to include repertoire from Costa Rica because we have the opinion that through music we can transmit change in our community. Part of our objective in is to demonstrate to the people that repertoire and composers exist so that they can feel represented and empower, empowered for realizing their own projects. We try to conserve it and promote a culture that exists in our community with music writing in our own community and we try to conserve it in this way. So such as we conserve it playing repertoire Costa Rican in general. The, this has led to connecting with different sources in order to collaborate, so working and acting together with the Archive Historical of Music, 
which is the reason why in the year of 2019, the Symphonic Orchestra de San Paolo donated part of their musical repertoire, writing between the 20th and 21st century in Costa Rica to the archive. Okay. Um, since, sorry, the goal behind promoting uh, to, uh, sorry, this year we could contribute with a first view of the we found in the calendar Constructa Sonoras to the future generation of musicians that are real part of the Symphonic Orchestra. And at the same time, it's marked to beginning the future project between both institutions. The goal behind promoting to achieve an unity of institution is to achieve archive visualization to relate to work of both institutions with a cultural heritage of Costa Rica and from the society, giving new life to the music and the composers. Since the foundation of the historical archive of music, its work has been focused to the conservation, diffusion, and salvation of the work from composers for the past decades, and well as the work from living composers. Um, as you can see in the picture, uh, is Benjamin Gutierrez is one of the composers most representative and important to our national music. And at the moment, the two that archive is also working spe specifically on film conser conservating, preserving his works. One of the latest researches for the historical archive of music of Costa Rica music from the 20s is the first collaborative active collaboration between both uh, institutions, the Archive and the Symphonic. The project consists of the broadcasting of the piece, El Duelo de la Patria, which uh, written by Rafael Chavez Torres, whose oldest documentations are dated in 1894. Beginning with the um, year of 1894, going up to the 1960s, to the existing documentations studied and used in the project are very, very rigorous. Coming from those documents that generate this new study, the editation of new scores and the publication of one of the most important pieces of our historical and cultural heritage. The project seeks for collaboration with commodities, approaching it through social action and together with the symphonic orchestra, it will try to break that of pieces, including the works of composers from the San Parados, female composers and musicians from Costa Rica and diverse conversations about those projects. The project at the same time will try to involve young people and bring the interpretation of Costa Rican work closer to them. Also, it will try to encourage the promotion of more and more projects in order to rescue the national music of Costa Rica, not only for musicians to play, but also for different public institutions. This was my presentation. I would like to thank you, you all for your time and attention. Thank you very much. Um, I will now like to introduce our king speaker. Um, I read uh, the bio of Ambassador Rodrigo Carazo is a permanent representative of Costa Rica to the United Nations in New York in 2018 to 2022. He served as a university professor in Costa Rica and in the United States and the University of Peace and is a member of the board of the Public Distance University in Costa Rica. Ambassador Carazo holds a law degree from the University of Costa Rica and a similar degree in economic and social sciences from the University of Costa Rica. A PhD in political science and international relations from the University of Geneva, Switzerland, and has completed further studies in history and international law. Ambassador Carazo has been a liberal professor professional since 1971 in the fields of economic law and international relations. He also served as a consultant for international organizations um, as well as for private entities. He has 40, 48 years of experience as a business man in, in commercial, industrial, tourist, agriculture, and service sectors. 
Ambassador Carazo was the first Ombudsman of Costa Rica and served as a member of the Leg Legislative Assembly. And Mrs. DeVito is currently a Fulbright Scholar in her final semester of LLM in environmental law at the New York University, ranked number one for environmental law in the US. Her thesis will be on climate change, refugees of a topic of critical importance and the insertion of human rights, environmental law, and refugee stories, lacking specific legal protection under both us and international law. Problems related to climatic immigration phenomena are almost entirely interested to international arbiters. Her determination has given her to the opportunity to travel the world, address the UN General Assembly, deliver a tell talk, and come to peace a Fulbright scholar. In April 2021, Mrs. DeVito joined the International Council of Environmental Law. She was selected for the UN practicum program organized by PACE University, an extremely competitive program that will allow me to spend the next few months with the delegates of UNM Permanent Mission of Costa Rica. Recently, she directed a documentary on climate change in Puerto Rico. She interviewed people who live have been disrupted by Hurricane Maria and recent earthquakes. Um, welcome to the board. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are transmitting from the uh, International Airport here, uh, New York, so any surrounding noise could be excused. I would like to begin by dedicating this uh, presentation to four ladies. The young lady I have not met, whose name is Luciana Alvarado, and I hope to see her on the screen uh, through a picture of her her artistic work uh, in uh, Tokyo, there is uh, Luciana. Uh, and uh, the second uh, young lady is here, here uh, with me, is Angelica De Vito, with whom I, I've been working in the last uh, three or four months uh, in New York. And uh, two distinguished uh, ladies, uh, Susan Campos and Carolina Campanero, who through art, uh, through music, have made the word of Costa Rica come alive as a manifestation of peace. Look at, look at Luciana, how strong. She made me feel so proud when she did that in the, as she finished her floor exercise as a gymnast in the Tokyo or Summer Games. Eighth or ninth place, but a strong signal saying to the world, we in Costa Rica care. We in Costa Rica, as she mentioned later, we are all the same. We are all beautiful. That's the message. That's the message transmitted through arts, through gymnastics. And that's the way that the world should be conducted. That's the work, the way of a communicating, communicating strength, communicating beliefs, communicating wishes, communicating art. It is. Uh, Perhaps in that uh, powerful sign of uh, Luciana Alvarado, we can uh, sum, we can uh, put in a nutshell everything that we in Costa Rica want to deliver to the world. A world of peace, a world of understanding, a world of uh, communication. Along with uh, Luciana and all other ladies uh, here with us in, in this uh, presentation, of which I feel so glad and so proud. Let's keep on going through artivism because yes, it is possible to create, it is possible to share, it is possible to accumulate that wealth that, wealth that culture brings uh, to humankind. Welcome and let's enjoy the, the, the whole activity. Thank you. Back to you, uh, Angelica. Yes, 
Thank you so much for having us today. And uh, as the ambassador said, we are very glad that Luciana had the occasion to make this powerful sign for all the young generation. Indeed, I feel that we have a huge responsibility. We have to use our creativity and our culture in order to change the type of communication. Indeed, through the arts, we are able to share, as in this case, important messages that are interesting, not just for us to grow up as a person, I'm sorry for <laughs> the other voice, uh, not just for us as a person, but also to share positive values. And sharing these values will give us more the perception that we are deeply connected to the environment we are living in. And so we should be able to transmit our feelings through the arts and sharing our knowledge to the arts. Of course, we live in a technological age, so we have also to use our new technological tools to share our experience. And uh, we have, in this case, with this picture, a good example of how good values can be shared through just a picture. But at the same time, we can use different type of art, as well as music or painting, just to use our imagination and create the type of world that we are looking for, for the future generation and for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The best of uh, luck and love to, to you all. Thank you. Thank you, you, Ambassador Carrasco and Mrs. DeVito. Now I would like to present our speaker for today, Dr. Susan Campos Fonseca. Susan Campos Fonseca is a music musicologist, composer, and writer. Campos Fonseca holds a PhD in the music from the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid in Spain, master in Spanish and Latin America philosophy from the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, and gra graduating in conducting from the University of Costa Rica. She is a composer and musicologist whose research focuses on philosophy of culture and technology, feminist, the colonial studies, electronic art, and sound studies. Campo Fonseca has received the 22 University Council Award from the Universidad de Costa Rica, the 24 was the Conductor Scholarship in the UK, the 25 Calorina Foundation Scholar Scholarship is Spain, the 27 um, 100 Latinos Award Spain, the Corda Foundation Award 29, and 2012 Casa de las Americas Musicology Award in Cuba, um, 2030, 2040 in the University of Costa Rica, distinguished um, the scholar, um, una universitaria destacada. She serves on the advisory boards of Boletino Musica de Cuba as being guest editor for Trans, Revista Transcultural de Musica, Spain, and Ideas Sonicas, Mexico. Her books include Herencias Cervantinas en la Musica Vocal Iberoamericana, Poesies de un Imaginario Cultural, for which she received the 2012 Casa de las Americas Musicology Award, and the co-edited volume Escudos de Género, Corpo e Musica, Abordingens Mythologica. Um, sorry, I'm from Serie Pequisa and Musica no de Brasil. She currently coordinates the project on arts, sciences, and technologies at UCR, where she is professor of musical story and transdisciplinary research. Welcome, Dr. Susan Campos Fonseca. Gracias, Iván. Thank you, Archie, Carolina, Angelica, Señor Embajador, Dr. Carazo. Thank you all. Thank you for this generous Spanglish season. <laughs> I hope I uh, do my best with English. Carolina, help me with the expo. Carolina, please. Today, um, 
I share with you the work of the Musical Historical Archive to the University of Costa Rica. First, I speak about our work, and later, I try to profound in our uh, project, a very special project, Constructoras Sonoras, Women Song Makers, Women Song Builders. Next. First, where is Costa Rica? I think it's very important. We can see, have a view from uh, my country, from our country. Next. Carolina? Next. Okay, Carolina. Is there a delay? I am looking at why investigate. Okay, well, we see Costa Rica uh, in the map between uh, Nicaragua, Panama, uh, it's in Central America. It's a very important dispute from Central America. This is a very uh, powerful uh, cultural territory. Um, for me, thinking about music in Costa Rica is uh, thinking about migration, about Central American migration between South America, Mexico, and North America. And of course, the Caribbean. Next. Why? Okay, we are a unique and unique institution dedicated to the musical heritage of Costa Rica. Um, our archive is the unique, is the only archive devoted to music in Central America. This is a big responsibility because we try to understand the heritage of our country, but to the same time, we need to save the heritage of Central America. And this is a very difficult and um, uh, because in, Costa, in Central America, we have um, big problems, economical uh, for wars and violence, uh, but we try to have this view to recover the heritage from Costa Rica, but to the same time, try to recover the um, heritage of Central America and think the living, the everyday life musics from Costa Rica and from Central America. Next. Why investigate, recover, conserve, and disseminate heritage and live music? This is a very important question. Please uh, thinking about that in the next minute. Siguiente. Our archive uh, be founded in 1993 with Samira Barquero. She's an amazing singer from Costa Rica. And she looking forward to the legacy of one of the most important composers from Costa Rica and Central America, Rocio Sanz. Rocio Sanz living in Mexico and make all day career, her career in Mexico. But when she died, Mexico, not th don't think more about her music. And in Costa Rica, uh, Samira have uh, take this responsibility and go to Mexico to recover this music and with this music and other uh, documents about um, historical heritage uh, in music, she founded the archive. Siguiente. Samira and Rocío Sanz. Siguiente. Okay, we, um, in the background, we design uh, projects to research music and for uh, social action. Uh, you have these uh, here and examples of these projects. Uh, we develop uh, for 10, 20 years, a lot of time of these projects to try to research our music, but to the same time, design uh, project to social impact. Siguiente. 
One of these projects is uh, I try to share uh, some results of this project is documentation, conservation, information, and dissemination of the heritage and everyday life music in Costa Rica. Siguiente. We try to um, create next, try, try to thinking about the benefits of uh, this project uh, to the population, to the communities of our country. Um, for example, composers, instrumentalists, music players, students, teachers, and uh, general public try to understand how this music, this documentation, uh, this scores and recorder music and video recorder music and all these important historical documents can connect to the everyday life to people and the uh, historical memoir. Siguiente. First, documentary. Uh, we try to, um, la anterior, Carolina, porfa. First, um, is try to looking forward to the documents from Costa Rica and Central America to represent this musical production. Next, try to have access to this uh, information Mm, all the process to the conservation of the documents, participating uh, and design uh, educational me mediation, mediation activities and social transfer of the knowledge. And of course, thinking about the solidarity uh, to recover this heritage and this in these times of economy, social, political, world, and climate, climate crisis. Siguiente. Benefits for the university. Well, this is the unique, it's the only one uh, musical historical archive in Costa Rica and Central America. And um, we try to uh, make us um, musicological research about this heritage in the country and the Central American region. And of course, uh, try to thinking about innovation, development, um, to preserve, con uh, study, all uh, the cultural thinking to be um, put in this uh, musical heritage in the region because music and score is a document of memory. It's a document of memory of a community, of a person, of a time. It's an, an special um, document about human life in history. Siguiente. Okay, we're working with uh, teaching, researching, and make, of course, social actions projects. This is the uh, substantive areas to the University of Costa Rica. Siguiente. Okay, um, we have an objective aim. It says document the Costa Rican and Central American music heritage, from archival and musicological process which includes rescue, conservation, study, and dissemination. Siguiente. Okay, our team. I uh, introduce to you Annette Seas. She is our archivist. In this photograph, she working with the conductor of the symphony orchestra of our university. Siguiente. Here with me is Luis Alfaro Bogantes. Uh, he is our music editor. Siguiente. Our second objective of this project is this special project about um, is recover musical documentation related to cultural practice on Costa Rica to conserve, study, and disseminate our country um, heritage. Siguiente. In this photograph, uh, I working with um, with Luis Alfaro Bogantes in a collection to um, 19th century music in Costa Rica. Siguiente. 
this is like example of the um, this is the kind of documents of documents with uh, with working you know, photos, scores, letters. Siguiente. Here you can see Ivan working and uh, Luis Alfaro Bogantes with other colleagues in the archives. Siguiente. Okay, social action. Keep the musical documentation in adequate condition for its material and digital, digital preservation. This is fundamental. This is fundamental to share and foreign study this heritage. Siguiente. Here, um, Annette, um, she developed a project with a special um, prints um, tables from a composer, Julio Fonseca, very unique in Costa Rica. And she uh, make a process of conservation on this amazing, amazing object. Siguiente. It's the kind of process of conservation to the scores. Siguiente. We're working to record the music in different formats from uh, classical music and folklore music, traditional music, popular music. Siguiente. This other kind of format to some recording. Okay. We design educational mediation strategies and activities for the social transfer of knowledge to disseminate the Costa Rican musical heritage. Siguiente. Working with communities. This is a very, very important matter. Siguiente. The Musical Historical Archive collaborates with national and international archives, centers, libraries, and research institutes with this purpose. Siguiente. You can see in this image um, that documentation that people, uh, we work in with people directly. This is very important. We try to have a social action. We need to listen to the community, to uh, have a, a conversation, a transversal dialogue to the community, to the artists, to the people. It's uh, the most important because we need to think with these people in with solidarity to try to understand uh, uh, their uh, musical uh, thing, but uh, to the same time, uh, their lives, um, uh, political positions, for example, um, their uh, timeline, for example, different generation. Siguiente. You can see here we're working um, with musicians um, and try to uh, be part uh, to events uh, are working to uh, other scholars. For example, you can see here Maria Clara Vargas. Um, she uh, make um, share a paper about Alejandro Cardona y Lorenz. He's a Spanish composer to living in Costa Rica in the 19th century. And he make a very important piece to the uh, period of um, independence world in Costa Rica. And in the other photo, you can see Elena Zuniga. She's a musician and composer. Um, she worked with us to record this uh, in to independence. It's a very important um, work of collaboration to other people. Siguiente. Okay. Uh, here we work in to uh, students of um, college. Um, we try to uh, share our publication and share a conversation about music. Um, of course, uh, they have a lot of questions about this music. And for us, it's an amazing experience to have this conversation. Siguiente. And we try to make um, audiovisual series, for example, one dedicated to musical edition in the archives. 
other one about compose the song history of our country. Because uh, remember, nationalism is designed by composers and designed for politicians. Um, we try to understand this process of design. And Constructoras Sonoras, Women Music with the special project I shared with you today. Siguiente. Okay, in our fan page in Facebook, you can see all these uh, videos. I invite you to uh, look in our fan page and see these audiovisual productions. Siguiente. Second question, how to apply decolonial and feminist studies to music research? Siguiente. For this purpose, we design women music builders, a feminist and the colonial calendar to commemorate the bicentennial of the independence of Costa Rica. This is a very important because in the uh, national schools, we have a lot of men, white men, uh, build an image about the country with politics, with the cities, with all the communities. But we don't listen about the women legacy, about the work of women, about the history of women. This is the reason because um, we decide to uh, research about these women and propose a calendar in, in the middle of all this celebration of Bicentennial of the Independence of Costa Rica and Central America to share uh, some stories of these women and their musics, different musics, classical music, popular music, folklore music, traditional music, not only about um, this uh, folklore design for main composers. Siguiente. Okay, uh, you can see here um, the women we uh, dedicated this uh, calendar. You can um, download the calendar in the page of Adelphi University. And um, I invite you to see this calendar and to share and to know more about these women. Siguiente. In these photos, you can um, see to Guadalupe Urbina, uh, she is part of the calendar. And in the other hand, you can see Eliana Babbar. Uh, she's part of the family of Emilia Prieto, another one to we dedicated the calendar. We try to connect with the artists and connect with their families. Try to connect with the families is a very important action of artivism, try to recover the memory of families, the personal memory of these families. We try, we need to think uh, memory in different levels. We have nationalism and the narratives about this history or the history of a country, of a community. Later, we have different levels, different levels to personal stories, family stories, community stories. And it's a very important try to think about this polyphony of memories because all this polyphony is part of um, the memory of a place, a country, a region. Um, it's, it's a very important action of, of art to try to connect this. In this case, about music and about memory of this women. Siguiente. Okay, you can see here, we try to um, connect with um, down there so of these women. And for example, we include the people uh, to China in this story. This is not only about people of, from Europe or people from Africa or the Caribbean of the indigenous people is about to the people of China or from Asia to come to Costa Rica and Central America. Um, and try to think the diversity of um, 
of these persons and the different regions of the world to this uh, to try their cultures from Costa Rica. It's, it's a very impressed uh, cultural diversity from Costa Rica. Siguiente. Okay, we may, uh, meet, uh, have a meeting with us. Um, uh, persons make an interview, produce the audiovisuals. And for example, this is a very important story. It's about Pacifica Celaya. She's a young uh, pianist. You can see in the portrait uh, from the Nauti century, she go to Belgium um, in the first decade of 20th century. Imagine make this long, long, long trip between Costa Rica and Belgium in 19th century or to the beginning of the 20th century. Okay, Pacifica Celaya go to Belgium uh, be an amazing pianist, but she be victim of femicide. It's a very tragic story. Um, a member of her family comes with us and share the story and share the documentation. Be a very, very strong moment. Siguiente. Other example of this action is the collaboration with the Costa Rican Art Museum, Museo de Arte Costarricense. Um, in the photo, you can see uh, Maria Jose Chavarria, the curator of this museum, and she prepared an, um, a special exposition about Emilia Prieto. Emilia Prieto, the amazing artist. She be a painter, writer, musical researcher, singer, political activist. Incredible, amazing women to explore Dadaism, surrealism, and to the same time, uh, research about uh, the popular music uh, from her time to the beginning of the 20th century. Okay, in this exposition, uh, we propose a song installation and uh, share our research about the musical work of Emilia Prieto. It's a very important part of memory because uh, folklore music or traditional music in Costa Rica in the beginning of the 20th century, we designed to main composers to try to imagine uh, a portrait of Costa Rica, but Emilia Prieto uh, made questions about these narratives, about this, uh, this um, imaginary, about this cultural imaginary, um, propose an amazing and innovative uh, ideas about uh, musical heritage at Costa Rica. Siguiente. Ivan uh, explained this photo. We are very grateful to um, collaborate with uh, Sinfonica de Desamparados. It's an amazing project. And we try to, all this music, we conserve and edit and publish, uh, be part of the repertoire to the musicians, to the young musicians in our country. In this case, uh, Ivan, Ivan uh, explained this experience. Siguiente. Another amazing um, experience with Constructora Sonoras can be um, shared the project in the um, Universidad de los Andes at Colombia. Um, we speak about uh, racism and discrimination in musical education. Um, put in the table the, this matter about uh, race and women and music at Costa Rica. Um, so, amazing opportunity to have a conversation to other uh, musicians um, and people to uh, Latin America, in this case from Colombia, about this kind of uh, social action, um, artivism in music education. Siguiente. We publish the music of the composer Rocio Sanz, of course, and I share this uh, edit there is uh, our edition and studies about her heritage, uh, her legacy, sorry, her legacy with um, young musician. In this, in this case, you can see Combrio Quartet. Um, it's um, um, 
John String Quartet from Costa Rica. They play amazing. They make an amazing performance of the uh, one of the quartets, uh, one of the string quartets of um, by uh, Rocio Sanz. Next. Dolores Castañaro, you can see her in the photo with Maria Callas. Dolores Castañaro be a composer and pianist uh, and conductor from Costa Rica. And she make uh, maybe the first opera uh, from Costa Rica in the 1930 to the beginning of the 20th century. It's, it's an amazing uh, woman. She conduct her own opera company, a very strong women. Uh, and now uh, we're working a lot in uh, her era, you know, in her music. Siguiente. And we filming Eritash, of course. Siguiente. One example uh, of a uh, women builder or constructora sonoras is a document, uh, documentary about Kihongo and the ecology of knowledge built with musical instruments in Costa Rica. We're working to, uh, we're, um, with two women's music educator to design a um, book to share the tradition to um, build the instrument and the repertoire to the instrument. They are amazing, Margarita and Carol. Siguiente. We present the, the film in, as part of Constructoras Sonoras. Siguiente. You can see in the photo uh, the students of Margarita and, and Carol. And uh, they playing with the Maestros Quijoneros. It's an amazing experience to be this woman, this educator, to recover, to study the heritage of their community and share this heritage in the schools and college. It's amazing, amazing experience to make this uh, film devoted to these um, musicians and professors, Margarita and Carl. Siguiente. Here, Constructoras Sonoras, and in the photo, Margarita and Carol. Siguiente. Siguiente. Okay, compose the song story of a country. To conclude, siguiente. Um, we try to design a series of conversation to um, women composers, uh, to indigenous people, uh, to different persons of community, to thinking, to making music, uh, and try to understand, try to listen in uh, their ideas. This is an example to young composers. Siguiente. Um, uh, women songwriters from Costa Rica, of course. Siguiente. Indigenous people from Costa Rica. Siguiente. And to people to working in radio or in social media, television, uh, for example, Audiotopia, Expedition Sonora is an amazing program devoted to everyday life music at Costa Rica. I recommend to you. Siguiente. And expositions. Great special expositions. Siguiente. Actually, we have Sound in Cities. It's a collaboration with Jose Pablo Ureña and include documentation preserved in the archives together to sound stories of our cities. Siguiente. Here is Ciudades Resonantes. Carolina, I'll make a little <laughs> exploration of the exposition. Maybe later when I finish, but you prefer? Give me one second, please. This exposition, you can see the exposition now. 
be open uh, virtual gallery of the University Council of the University of Costa Rica uh, between November and December. If I may, while um, Carolina um, gets the link to this, uh, uh, Jose Pablo Urena uh, did the street scenes, correct? Yes, exactly. Yes, I remember. Yes, yes. And it was to specific music. It was almost like being able to hear the sounds through his works, his spontaneous works, right? Exactly. Yes, they were beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, with some skates from the uh, city of San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. Right. And we're doing a um, um, piece of uh, visual piece uh, from Mauricio Quiroz, a Costa Rican composer, to live in New York. Mm. Uh, Mauricio make a short film uh, about uh, his memory. Uh, from Costa Rica to different places, different people, and different generations. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, video art in the exposition. But it's okay, we can see the exposition in other moments. We can share maybe the link. Uh, of course, we can easy. put it on the, on the Zoom uh, chat if you like, because it's taking a little time to load. Apologies okay. about that. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Okay. Yes, and I would like to encourage everyone to take a look because the drawings are beautiful. They're beautiful, and you can you can hear the sounds without having really to listen to them. Right? You get the sense of the the, the sounds of the city through his drawings. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, Carolina, si quieres seguimos. Siguiente. Okay. Siguiente slide. Okay, this is part of the exposition. Thank you, Dr. Akelarkis. Siguiente. Um, this is part of the exposition, uh, one, uh, the drone, the piece of art, but you can see uh, documents, historical documents of people, to maestros of Kihongo, Kihongo players. Siguiente. Okay, this is a musicians from the 20th century. Siguiente. You can see that different kind of music, different kind of people. Siguiente. People to different races in different spaces. We try to study and conserve all these treasures. Siguiente. It's amazing because it's the house of people to make music in their everyday life. Siguiente. And we collaborate with other projects. For example, this is from European community. It's Connect Caribbean, it's the name of the project. And we share the documents we have to people, uh, African uh, people in Costa Rica, African culture at Costa Rica. Siguiente. And present a uh, Ramon Morales film devoted to Calypsonians today at Costa Rica. Calypso is a very special music gender for Caribbean um, Central America. Si quieres, vamos terminando. Carolina, creo que se han faltado unos slides nada más. One second, I think I lost the connection, please.
Si quieres, vamos directamente a la, a la 70, 71, perdón. I'll say it while Carolina is looking again. Um, this is so wonderful. I mean, all of this is great. You're, you're, you're sharing and documenting all these treasures, as you say, that can be appreciated for many generations to come. It's, it's beautiful, very beautiful. We hope, we hope uh, other generation can appreciate, uh, remember, remember uh, rethinking their past. Right. Because, yeah, we need to rethink in past and uh, historical memory. Um, music is an amazing, amazing uh, tool to think time, past, present, future is, is fundamental, fundamental. And the action we can do like musicians, composers, when we working with heritage and we working to everyday life music and try to understand all to the same level, all are very important. We don't have uh, music most important to another one. We need to study art composer, but we need to study popular music, folklore, Right. And people to different uh, groups, social groups, to try to understand um, human beings. Mm. It's a very important to activism because activism uh, create this amazing and generous space to have this kind of conversations. Uh, maybe uh, okay, our English is not so good, it's but very good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I. I... I would also like to encourage our participants to look at the website and um, download the calendar. It's really beautiful, very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ayelarakis. Not doctor, not yet, someday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can uh, write us from the archives. Carolina can share the, our page and um, email mm. um, our um, fan page you can write um, for us be a pleasure share uh, this music and i hope you have uh, interest to play this music and know more about costa rican culture thank you very much for your time and generosity En el 71, okay. Carolina, tiene los datos. Um, the website, uh, Carolina, you will put it in the chat. Do you want me to put it in? Let me try. One second. Okay. It wasn't going. So let's see if it goes now. There we go. Is that there go. Can you see it? Now we got it. Okay, I think we're ready for Ivan. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Ambassador Carazo and Dr. Campos Fonseca for being our activist today. This coming Monday at 4 p.m. Est, Art Jones and Dr. Sakarina will present the classroom at the intersection of art, history and social justice. Before we open up the floor to the questions for our presence, presenters, we ask that you participate in the short pull up on your screen right now. For more information on this and all of the series past and upcoming events, please go to the website and adelphi.edu artivins. Follow us on Instagram, uh, artivins for share humanity or simply Google Artivins and Adelphi. Our YouTube channel is Artivins for Share Humanity. We're also hosting an open call art installation for all creative thinkers in our Instagram. If you would like to get more involved in this ongoing initiative, please contact the Artivins team at Artivins at Adelphi.edu. I will now like to ask if there are any questions for our activists, please use the raise hand function of Zoom, unmute yourself or ask your question in the Zoom chat. Uh, 
um, I will ask um, um, Susan Campos, um, what inspired you to do all this? How did you start? What was the point when you said, I need to do this? Because it's not just want, it's a need, also a passion, right? Of course. Of course, uh, when I have uh, 10 years, maybe nine, 10 years, uh, I have the dream to play in the band of my town. Uh, in the beginning, I uh, have the dream to be a pianist, but uh, at, me in, at my community, we don't have uh, teachers, piano teachers, don't have it. And I'm thinking, oh, I need to play music. Uh, I love it, no? And we have a little band. And I decide, okay, to my parents, I need to go to the band. But when I be in the band, the director, conductor of the band uh, say, this is the instruments for women, this is the instruments for men. <laughs> it's so crazy. I never, never uh, forgot this. It's uh, so crazy. And this is not the first time. I think a lot of women have this kind of experience. And it's the same when I decide to come in to compose music. Maybe I have 13, 14 years and, and, and be a teenager. Uh, I have the opportunity to study with Marvin Camacho Villegas. He's an important composer from Costa Rica. Um, uh, he come to my town uh, at the University of Costa Rica um, with the music project. And be amazing for me because I can play piano and compose uh, and other things. But for me, this uh, kind of discrimination about this is for women. You can make this. I'm being so angry, you know, it's so terrible, no? And when I um, in my 20s, uh, I decided to be a conductor. And I remember the professor of conducting say, women can be conductors. <laughs> what? Uh, once again, I can't believe it, no? And I remember he say, no, men never, never uh, work with a women conductor. No? Um, uh, men be very violent with you. Uh, don't listen to your instruction about music and don't respect to you. You can be a conductor. And once again, I be very angry. I say, no, I can be uh, play the instruments I like. I can compose, I can conducting. And I made my conducting degree and go to UK with the study with amazing conductor, Tim Rainish. He's an amazing, amazing conductor, British conductor, conductor. Um, and working conducting uh, several years. But in the middle of this, um, I have a scholarship to go to Spain to, because I'm very interested, interested in uh, researching about heritage because I, I be uh, a problem about memory, about music memory in our repertoire. We only play European music. Uh, this, I think this, this is not normal, no? or we play Costa Rica music, but it's uh, symphonic music inspired in folklore, sometimes contemporary music, but where is the, the the music of 18th, 19th century from Costa Rica, maybe to the colony period. No? And I decided to um, make a course in the Real Conservatorio de Madrid, Royal Conservatory of Madrid, and study uh, historical musicology there. I love it, the experience. Um, I'm looking for a scholarship to study in the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, uh, make my master and PhD at historical musicology. When I come back to Costa Rica, um, I'm working with a professor of history of music, and I try to share all of this knowledge with the young people. You know? uh, try to make questions about our past and about the music we play, um, about the situation of musicians in our country and about women in music profession. When I be, uh, I have the, this uh, position of uh, chairman of the, um, I have this director of the musical archive. Uh, I come into um, 
read all this music, looking for uh, women composers and well, women musicians, no? Because this is very important for me. Being a Costa Rican woman, I need to know these uh, uh, Costa Rican women uh, to be pioneer, no? And Samira Barquero may publish books and working a lot about that. Um, I tried to work in with Samira and other researchers about that. I hope this project uh, inspired to other musicians, men and women, to thinking uh, about more inclusive repertoire, more inclusive history of music from Costa Rica, from Latin America, and, okay, from the world, huh? try to understand diversity of music, diversity of music and the social action to put this name is history, to play this music, to remember these people made this amazing, amazing music and projects in the past. And can, uh, we can learn about how these persons and transforming the world and don't have more discrimination and don't have more violence of a different world. Mm -hmm. no? um, I wanted to just point out uh, Carly Roberts, who is here, who is from, um, her family is from uh, Portugal, uh, went back home and I guess witnessed their experience, this film festival, uh, um, a festival for, for film and media. And her experience was uh, the films that they were, um, I guess represented were American. <laughs> and not uh, um, from Portugal. So uh, she also uh, created a, a film and I guess a study on, you know, your roots, right? You, you do have film, you do have stories to tell, you have narratives, you have film. Uh, it doesn't always have to be Hollywood, right? Uh, one more quick question. Um, have you seen a change in your lifetime? Of course. Um, I see more women playing different instruments, more women conducting, more women composing, where more women uh, leaders in our communities, in other, our country. Okay, Angelica, uh, the ambassador chair, an example. Um, I'm, I'm very proud because women in my country transform, transform our society. They, they are very, very strong um, in, in the sports, in literature, science, for example, in science. There's a very big movement of women in science in my country. You know? um, I hope a new generation inspired for this. Uh, we have a different society, more inclusive uh, in equality. I would like to take a second here to thank you, Dr. Campos, for this marvelous presentation that you have shared with us uh, with your research and teamwork collaborations. Also, Ivan Chinchilla, thank you for being our wonderful um, student ambassador today and all the work that you're doing in the Tamparados. Uh, ambassador Carrasa and Ms. Devito, also thank you for being part of this conversation and sharing those words of um, the power that we all have within and through art to make um, a change in our society. Um, along those lines, now, I would like to also thank the audience members and everyone watching this video, because it is in you. Everything that we need for a better society starts with oneself, right? If we have that desire, and that's the hope of artivism to inspire that action that you as an individual can create in your context, be it in school, be it at work, in your own home, that's what counts. But if we wait for the majority and not start with us, that change will never come. Now, Dr. Campos, don't think you're gonna be off the hook that easy. I have a question for you too. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> so, you know, um, here what we are talking about basically is uh, decolonizing mentality, right? And decolonizing at different levels. Okay, in your research, we're doing it through music, right? But to start breaking those barriers, we also have to start decolonizing how people think. Because, like in your case, just to question, I want to be a, a um, in the band, you know, one musician. Something had to sparkle that question in your mind, and you had to have the context that was um, 
leading you to to ask and continue that search to be now where you are. So how can we go about for the people that perhaps still see that they don't have that op that opportunity to question their status quo? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think education is the key. Mm -hmm. Education is the key. Um, my parents are amazing, amazing feminists at um, <laughs> a political act this person <laughs> uh, uh, my parents say no no so you can do whenever you want exactly don't worry susan don't worry and to my sister in the same they uh, we have different toys and have access to different kinds of knowledge all the time mm -hmm. they never mm -hmm. say this is for ladies this is for gentlemen never never um, is when I go to society, I go to school, and college, um, school of music, uh, working with other person. When this person say, you can do this, mm -hmm. you can't, because you are women, you are a woman, you can. Uh -huh. um, for me, say, I'm sorry, but <laughs> no way, <laughs> no way. I can do this, and you can. You can't say to me what I can do. This is mm -hmm. my decision. It's my decision. But it's very important. Education. We work. For me, educators are the most important persons in society. The most important person in society. You can have uh, scientists, um, engineers, uh, medical uh, professionals, but if these people don't have an education in these values, society don't change. Society don't change. Educators are the key. And for this reason, it's so important, this kind of, of spaces. When we, university open to the world, listening other persons and other people to the world and create this a generous, generous conversation. This is the, the, this is the kind of projects we need in our universities, in the United States, in Latin America, Europe, Africa, Asia, whenever, in all the world, universities, and um, educational institute, institutions needs this kind of project of artivism. We need to be inspired to make this kind of action in all the educational institutions because it's the only way we can touch the life to these persons and say, you can do this. You can be strong, you can be inspired, you can be a creator, you can transform your environment, you can make the change. It's our mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will say definitely those are part of the key takeaways from today's presentation. To question, to research, to follow through, right? If it comes to mind, don't just let it stay there but rather follow through. And like this project, Constructoras Sonoras, the marvelous um, conversation that it's creating in regards of, as you were saying, musical memory, right? In regards of who are we archiving? Who are we uh, celebrating? How does our musical history sound like? Who is it representing or not? If that idea would have just stayed in your mind, right, and all of the team that has been part of this research, we wouldn't be here today, <laughs> right? So we need to take action. Um, I was wondering if perhaps uh, anyone from the audience has an, uh, another question for Dr. Campos or Mr. Chinchilla. The ambassador and Ms. DeVito had to leave us because they were, as you saw, they were at the airport where we were very thankful for their uh, participation. Okay, so thank you, Professor Aguilarakis, uh, Saira Eri, Dr. Lake, and all the artists on team, as Dr. Campos said, for this space that creates these conversations. 
and thank you to the audience members here present and all of you out there that are making that change in your context. So let's keep working together. Uh, like Dr. Campos mentioned a couple times during her presentation, it's about collaboration, uniting, working together to get all this going. Um, Professor Campos, one takeaway. I hope so. <laughs> the last one takeaway from <laughs> just one one takeaway to inspire let's say anyone that might be listening to us in the recording who what would you say to that person we need to make questions we need to make questions we need to thinking we need to remember how think is we need to remember mm -hmm. yeah i like that remember how to think. Mm -hmm. Ivan Chinchilla, how about you? For our students and all of our um, musicians as well out there, what any kind of um, word of wisdom or you know a takeaway from your experience? Maybe, I don't know, search the information. Uh, and I don't know, read and read the past a lot and understand that that can make the, the, the change, you know? Perfect. Beautiful. Reading, exactly. We need to remember reading. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> read. Uh huh. Bueno, yeah. pura vida. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> no, thank you very much with this amazing opportunity to have this conversation and congratulations for this amazing, important, urgent project. Thank you, thank you very much.